In today's video, we're going to be talking about the tropics where we do have a new threat here in the Gulf of Mexico that we need to talk about. In this situation, we actually do need to be considering the possibility of a landfalling tropical system in the United States. So we're going to be talking all about that today. Also, we still have Tropical Storm Franklin now over open seas. It was over the Dominican Republic in yesterday's video. It is now crossed north of that point. Uh, and is now open, over open water and expected to develop further. And then we have our two threats in the very far, kind of like very middle of the Atlantic there. We have seen an increase in probability here with this underneath one, and then we have seen kind of a maintaining level of, of risk here with this one to the north. So we're going to be talking all about those. Also, uh, we're going to be going into the overall upcoming pattern, of course, with the storminess, the temperature patterns where there is some big flips on the way. We have some warm ups, some cool downs. That's been the story here for a little bit, a few weeks. It's been that way. And we're going to talk more about that today. I feel like that was very, very long winded. I want to announce that in Prestige Weather, we did, we did just release our second winter forecast in there for the early access for all of the members. So today, it is $5 a month in the description and pinned comment down below, and you can check that out. That'll be coming out on the YouTube channel in a few weeks. So you can check that out in our early access. We do that for all of our seasonal and monthly forecasts. So we do have our final fall forecast coming up within a week. It will be released in there. Uh, also, the first freeze, first frost, first snowfall, total snowfall, fall foliage. I'm trying to think if I'm missing any here. All of those videos are also going to be released early within that community, so be sure to check it out today. Now, let's get into things. This has probably been the longest intro I've ever had, so I do apologize there. Uh, we can see that there is a 50% chance of development through the next seven days here in the Southern Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. We can see that over the next two days, there is a 10% chance there, uh, so this is not expected to develop uh, likely within the next two days, but there is a coin flip chance there over the next seven days, primarily the final five days of that seven day period of development. And this will be crossing uh, probably between Cuba and the, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula there. If there is land interaction that will hinder some development. So that's going to be some stuff that we need to pay attention to. This is also a unique storm because when they cross from the Pacific to the Atlantic like this, it's always a very interesting situation. Uh, I have witnessed this through my direct weather career happen a couple of times. So this is always an interesting storm track uh, to, to really pay attention to. Now, our other systems out here in the Atlantic, we do have a 20% chance of development over the next 48 hours here with this underneath one, and then a 40% chance over the next seven days. To the north there, um, we can see that there is a 70% chance over the next 48 hours and a 70% chance over the next seven days. So we can see that that one overall through the next seven days period has a 70% chance of development, which would get us further into that named storm list, of course. Now for Tropical Storm Franklin here, we can see it's expected to move very slowly. I talked about this yesterday, but there's 12 hours between each little dot there that you can see. So when they are very close together, that indicates very slow movement. You can see it speeds up over time. Um, this one is one that we're watching closely because not only is it expected to upgrade to a hurricane by Saturday morning, but also it has a pretty wide cone here at the end. It can range anywhere from as far east as Bermuda or as far west as getting awfully close there to the eastern seaboard. So although this isn't the highest chance of hitting the east coast that I've ever seen by any means, that kind of window of opportunity is still there a little bit. So we're going to be tracking it as if there is some chance of, of some east coast impacts, although the most likely scenario, thankfully at this point, is pretty far out to sea. So that is what we can definitely hope for at this point with Tropical Storm and eventually expected at least Hurricane Franklin. Now let's move into the upcoming pattern overall. By later today, uh, we could see that we are beginning to get some thunderstorm activity rolling for a lot of the Northeast, the Great Lakes, and the Mid-Atlantic there. For the four corner states and a lot of the Southwest there, we could see some thunderstorms firing up. Everywhere kind of in between, not much is going on at this point. Uh, by Friday afternoon, which will be tomorrow, we could see a lot more thunderstorm activity kind of just all together here from the four corner states, some of the Southern Rockies and even the Northern Rockies there in Wyoming, 
through the plains, through the upper Midwest, through the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, and then down to the southeast of Mid-Atlantic, and all the way up into the northeast. And actually, this seems like a pretty stormy day for a lot of the areas in this corridor here that I just drew. We're seeing some darker greens popping up, which is a little bit more indicative of some heavier activity and a lot more consistent activity. So that is going to be the primary things that we're watching for here. Now, by the time we reach Saturday the 26th here, we can see that there is plenty of thunderstorm activity back out west. A little bit less consistent and persistent, which is my two favorite words to put together there. I don't know why. But we see more isolated and scattered about activity in the east this time around there for Saturday on the 26th. Uh, for the 27th here on Sunday, uh, we can see thunderstorms up and down the eastern seaboard back down through the plains, something about like this. There is some more consistent pockets, as you can see, like this area here in North Carolina and Virginia. And then also back through Tennessee, Kentucky, the Appalachian Mountains, and even as far backwards as Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Now, we can see that this is Tropical Storm or even Hurricane Franklin at this point. So this one is going to be something that we can watch here from the lower 48 perspective. We do see a pretty far out to sea solution here on our uh, European model. But I do want to say that's a 973 millibar system, which is going to be relatively strong. So that's going to be something to watch for. Uh, we can see thunderstorms up and down this corridor here. Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, a lot of the deeper south there. The mid-Atlantic up into the northeast there. Very dry for the north and the west, as you can see on Monday there. Now, by Tuesday, we can see uh, two tropical systems. This is just like a little bit nervously close for me. Uh, this one here in the Atlantic, it's just, it's just close enough to where you kind of have to wonder, like I mentioned earlier, could there be some land interaction there? This one in the Gulf here is only a 996, which would be a relatively weaker tropical system, but it is approaching Florida here. And really undeniably, it seems like that would be the most likely scenario there. Now, as we reach Wednesday, you can see that we see it cross into the Southeast here. Um, so this system moves off from the Atlantic. We do see this one move from the Gulf there into the Southeast coast as it crosses over Florida. I want to see if there's any more development. By this point, we do see an interesting jet stream, something like this. Uh, and then we're getting a lot of storminess for eastern Canada and the northeastern United States as a result of that amplification. Uh, now, we do see that this system does redevelop a bit back down to, I think, a 994 here, which is a still weaker system just near the Carolina coast. So that would be something to watch for as well. Um, we could see this strengthen a bit. We could see it closer to the coast. This is definitely something to watch for for a lot of the southeast in general there. Uh, as we keep going, we see we get into a quieter pattern. We do see some activity for areas back west. Something about like this is what we're seeing as far as some storminess. I want to get us one day further here to September 2nd, getting a little bit more active. Um, we can see it's a little bit further spread, spread around here, I would say. And then for a lot of the Gulf Coast, we're seeing some thunderstorms firing up. Perhaps more threats from the Gulf coming up as we can see just tons of storminess. And it really just depends on what that jet stream is going to allow to happen. So we'll be watching that very diligently, of course. The total precipitation here, we could see some above average activity for the northwest. Some of the southwest and south central here, like the four corner states into the plains. And then around the east coast and back up through the upper Midwest is a, is a pocket to watch as well with these tropical systems moving through. But Florida, through the southeast coast and all the way up into the northeast, we're expecting potential above average activity. Now, let's get straight into that temperature pattern. It's been cooler along the east. I want to take it further, though, because we do get this bit of a warm-up taking place for Friday, Saturday time frame. It really quickly moves in, and we see a, a dramatic warming trend, especially along the eastern seaboard. There is this colder air beginning to push here from the north, and this could be a factor moving forward. We do have a lot of warmer air set up for a lot of these areas, indicating maybe a positive PNA is trying to set up here. We do see that cooldown move through and it actually has a follow-up one behind it as well. By this point, we clearly have a very strong positive PNA, which I've always talked about this, but it really dramatically uh, encourages this cold air to move down into the east and we're seeing it happen almost instantly here. And this one's pretty potent here around August 31st. It's also important to note that our average temperatures are beginning to drop. We're at like the top of the roller coaster, just beginning to go down the hill now as far as the, the annual temperatures and just where we're at as far as what the average temperature should look like. 
So as we approach September, I would say a lot of 70s can't be ruled out for these green and dark blue areas. So this would be a pretty significant cooldown in this case. Maybe even 60s for some of these very far northern areas could not be completely ruled out, especially if we see this get a little bit more dramatic over time. And that sticks around for a little bit. We do see a warm up begin and maybe even the opposite of that pattern I was talking about earlier. We're maybe even seeing a negative PNA set up here by about the end of the first week of September. And look at the opposite happening so quickly. Warmth just surging for a lot of the eastern half of the nation here. Let's keep going. And really, this is what we see by the end of the model run. A lot of cooler air trending in for this pocket here. And then the surging warmth to the east uh, for a lot of these areas. Anyway, be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day, so you can always keep up to date with all of these things concerning the weather. We'll be keeping you guys up to date with the pattern, the, the tropics here. Every single day, we'll be watching all of these things with you guys. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.